what I'm going to do is, is just ask each of my panelists to introduce themselves and, um, and tell us why they're here. Um, they're going to do a much better job than me reading a bio out. So, um, Marie-Claire, would you... Um, oh, pardon, I thought you... Um, Mike, let's check. Uh, the m it's fine. C'est parfait. Okay. So, please. So, uh, Marie-Claire Daveux, I am in charge of uh, sustainability institutional affairs uh, inside uh, Caring Group. So, Caring, it's a luxury uh, company. We have uh, brands to name a few, uh, like uh, Gucci, Bottega Veneta, Balenciaga, uh, Pomelato, and Boucheron. Super, thank you. And you're, you're here as a, a partner of Change now? Yes, exactly. Uh, we start to be a partner from the beginning of uh, the story of Change Now. Uh, we have the feeling that if we want to change a paradigm on the environmental side, but also on the social side, we need really to work in a collaborative uh, approach where uh, innovation is uh, really key. So that's why we decided to, to join. Today we have also some startup, and perhaps we will have the time yep. to, to come back about them, uh, which are here for uh, this uh, exhibition. And uh, we think that it's really important to, uh, to exchange also between companies. And so that's why I'm very happy to be with my friend, uh, Alexandra, on stage. Fantastic. Well, that's a great segue to Alexandra. Please um, introduce yourselves. Yes, hello. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you all for having us. So my name is Alexandra Palt. I'm uh, the Chief Sustainability Officer and the CEO of the L'Oreal Foundation. So we call all this together the Corporate Responsibility. Um, L'Oreal is uh, uh, the leader in the beauty industry with 35 international brands. Uh, um, having committed uh, to, to a transformation in 2013 that is, of course, ongoing. And I hope I will be sure to, to, to share some of our progress and some of the difficulties and uh, some of the challenges in the next 20 minutes. Fabulous. Thank you. And, and Chris, a fellow Brit, over to you for a quick intro, please. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it's great to be here with, uh, with the two of you as well. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just... Yeah. Um, I'm Chris Turner. I, um, I am the executive director of um, B Lab UK, um, which is the charity in the UK that's behind the B Corporation movement. Can I do a quick show of hands who knows what a B Corp is? That makes my job much easier. Um, <laughs> excellent. Who is a B Corp? <laughs> yeah, how many B Corps? Excellent. Still need to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit of work to do. Um, so, so, yeah, so we, we obviously um, have partners here. There's a, there's a B Lab stand here. Um, our B Lab Europe colleagues um, are there, and there's there's workshops and things going on um, led by them. Um, and I also run a campaign called the Better Business Act, which is a um, a big campaign in the UK to try and change corporate governance, um, so that there are mandatory requirements um, to reflect those that, that B Corps have adopted voluntarily. So I can speak a bit more about that as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks very much for the introductions. Much better than I would have done. So. Um Marie Claire, so, so talking, thinking about some of the um, initiatives that you at Caring across your amazing scope of brands and you have huge influence globally. What are you doing around, uh, so, you, so you're doing a lot around carbon we talked about, but, but the other kind of planetary boundary, uh, the sort of biodiversity and some of the other areas, social, how to, just can you bring it to life a little bit with some of the initiatives that you're undertaking? Because I, I sometimes think we... You know, we look at brands and we, we kind of don't, get, don't know the stories behind them and all the work. And certainly when we were talking earlier, there's just so much happening. Could you bring that to life uh, for the audience a little bit, please? So I don't want to keep the 20 minutes only no, for me. So uh, I will go in a nutshell about the past and uh, above all about the, the future, which is most important for me. About the past, uh, we have a very uh, pragmatic uh, approach when we are speaking about planetary boundaries, not only linked with water, with uh, climate change or biodiversity, uh, because now nearly uh, 10 years ago, we created, and uh, I think uh, many people now know this tool, what we call the environmental profit and loss account, which is a tool to measure our environmental footprint not only in our own boundaries, but also in our entire supply chain. And now, uh, and 
until the end of life of the products. And only to give you the order of magnitude for our business, over 90% of our environmental footprint is linked with our supply chain. It means outside our legal boundaries. Based on this, I will say, milestone, uh, we were able to uh, dedicate specific program on raw materials. So uh, in link also, and you mentioned it, biodiversity with regenerative agriculture. So we created now two years ago a fund where we are transforming one million hectares from conventional agriculture to regenerative uh, agriculture. When we are speaking about greenhouse gas emission for our scope one and scope two, between 2015 and 2022, we were able to reduce by uh, 71 percent uh, our greenhouse gas emission. Scope three in intensity by uh, 52 percent. We have 100 percent renewable uh, energy inside our legal boundaries. So I can mention yep. many things, but I would like also to take this opportunity to tell you that it's still a lot of work to do. And I think a big change we decided this year is to make an announcement in link with climate change and to respect uh, the planet boundaries that now to speak about intensity, it's not enough. That's why we decided to reduce in absolute value by 40% our greenhouse gas emission by 2035. So for me, it's a big shift because you have to really tackle your business model. Uh, it's about fair production, it's about innovation, and it's about new business model. And I hope also inside Change Now to be able to find new solutions, new innovation that will support us really to uh, transform in a reality uh, this uh, very ambitious uh, target because we are a company and we want also to continue to grow. Thank you. I mean, amazing, and there's a lot, a lot in all of that. But um, thank you so much. And, and I'm going to move to Alexandra. Tell us, um, you know, you have a, you're, it's, a, it's a slightly different business. You're in the beauty space. Again, I, I, when, when I was looking into it and talking, you, you're just doing so much. And I don't know how much of that comes through in your, with, with you as a customer. But tell us a little bit about some of the, some of the work you're doing. Please. Yeah, so um, what I would like to, to suggest is I'm, I'm not going to talk about all the things we are doing because, you know, that is also a, a fight sometimes, of course, internally because people say, can't we concentrate on something? But no, we cannot concentrate on something because the environmental challenges and social challenges are so vast and so enormous that we have to do a lot of different things in order to respond to the challenges. So I see in the room 10 people of my team. So I really, so they can all at lunch, please try. Uh, can you stand up or L'Oreal um, or just raise your hands? Right. Yeah, you see, so um, they can really, if you have a specific question on climate, on biodiversity, on resource utilization, on living wage, I think, uh, and we have a very, very, we have formalized our vision already in 2020 in a document that is called L'Oreal for the Future, where there are all our targets defined with scientists on how will we be able to operate in 2030 within the planetary boundaries. What I would like to share with you is how does that happen on a daily level on one issue and how complicated it is and how much challenges are there from all. And so, as we have heard before, that refill and recharge is a challenge. I would like to take this example. So when we look at our packaging, you imagine when you put beauty products on the market, packaging is extremely important. Um, it is the first contact with the consumer. It is about the safety and the appearance of the product. Consumers buy beauty products because of what the packaging is looking like. And when you ask them, for example, we have a target of reducing packaging intensity, becomes much lighter. Very often they say, ah, it looks that I get less for my money. Um, so there are a lot of challenges around packaging. So one, there are different solutions. For us, the solutions is so all our recycled, pla our uh, plastic will be recycled in 2030. It is already, uh, we will be at 50% in 2005, and we accepted the roadmap. But it is more than that. We have to change consumer habits. 
and there are many steps. So what is difficult? First of all, of course, it is you have to create an economic equation that works for refill. Uh, you cannot bring uh, products on the market that does not allow the company to continue to make business. So we have to be innovative, we have to disrupt. So you have to train your people so that they think different about what you can bring to the market. Then you have to market it. And that is also something I think where we can still do better because it's not sufficient to put it out there. People really need to be encouraged um, and incentivized. So we have done a lot of tests. I give you some interesting information because it sounds also easy. So let's do refill, recharge, and then the question is solved. But unfortunately, it's not. Because when you do refill and recharge, you put it on the market. If it's not 25% less expensive, people don't buy it. It has not to be the same price. It has to be 25% less expensive. And then, even then, you have to make a huge, huge effort in order to promote it, to encourage people to adopt new consumer behaviors. So what I want to say by this example is, so first, of course, we have a responsibility to do it. We have a responsibility <coughs> to be innovative, disruptive, find new solutions, market them. And then we have a society a responsibility to also change our behaviors as consumers. And how often do we do that every day when we buy something, asking ourselves, have we looked at the environmental footprint of this product, of how the company behaves? Are we thinking that we are so small that our personal contribution is not going to make a difference? I think everybody has already thought that. I have thought that. Uh, that our country, but we have to understand that we ha it has to be a societal, a collective transformation where everybody has a role to play. So I think what we need now at this time of history is that companies, individuals, politicians, governments, regulators, civil society, we come together and understand that we are in the same boat and that all those who want to progress have to do it together. So it's not anymore about the bad uh, companies. Yeah. It is, this is, this is about together. Brilliant, thank you so much, that's amazing. And a very good setup for um, Chris to um, maybe res re respond to some of this because B, B Lab and B Corp was of course set up to you know, drive this new agenda, drive a new way of incorporating companies. And, and look, we've, he we've heard amazing examples of, of things that are happening at scale, but also difficulties with consumers kind of making that change. T talk a bit about, reflect on that a bit, Chris, and see, you know, tell us a bit about what the, the, the B-Lab movement is doing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, really, really, really interesting stuff. And I, uh, I suppose that, um, what do I think? You all know, well, some of you didn't put your hand up. Most of you know what a B Corp is. And I think that the, um, I mean, mo therefore, most of you will probably know that the, the B Corp movement has accelerated dramatically over the last few years. So there's 6,000 B Corps around the world now. Um, in the UK, there's nearly 1,500 um, B Corps. And I think there's obviously lots of reasons for that. Part, part of the reason for that is the incredible B Corps we already have and the work they do in, in spreading the word and inspiring others to join them. But I think at the very core of the growth of, of the B Corp movement is, is a sort of secret recipe um, which is, in effect, it, 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 in reality, it is the combination of our assessment. So it's a, a lot of hard work to pass that, to do that assessment, to make improvements necessary, to reach a minimum bar, to be verified. Um, and is a combination of that with what we require in terms of what we call a mission lock, um, so a legal change in the UK, you amend your articles of association. In the US, you have to become a benefit corporation. But a, a kind of enshrining the principles, essentially, being governed in the interests of a wider set of stakeholders within the governance of the business. And I think it's a combination of those two things, which is a real kind of magic the, and the real secret recipe at the heart of B Corp and our success. Because what you're doing there is you're combining the, the how and the why. Um, and the B Corp assessment and all of that hard work is a how. It's a how, how you, do, how you do, do better, how you have more positive impact. But the governance piece there is the why. 
because you're enshrining it in, in your business. And, and what we just heard is a lot, of, a lot of the how, a lot of the ways that your businesses are, are doing things in, in a better way. Um, and I think that the, for me, if you have the why, and if you know, anybody who works for a B lab has to sort of do earmuffs now, if you've got the why in place, I don't really care about you know, whether, you, whether you do the how by being a B Corp, as long as you do it. And being a B Corp is a brilliant way of doing it. It's an incredibly powerful way of doing it. And it's a way that um, clearly um, 6,000 businesses have found really, really valuable. Um, now, the additional benefit of doing it through something like B Corp and getting a certification is you then get the sort of feedback loop you know, back into the why because it's something that customers, consumers, citizens recognize. Um, and so you're performing a role in sort of educating people there as well, which essentially plays into the incentives. And I was thinking about Kate's presentation earlier on as she was talking about these sort of elements of business design, um, thinking, about the, thinking about the governance, um, thinking about the ownership, thinking about other stakeholders um, and how a business interacts with those. And essentially, for me, they all really sort of play into that why question. It is ultimately, at the end of the day, a, the simple fact that a business is just a collection of people. And those people, every single day, have to make decisions. Um, and when we talk about corporate governance, and I might get a chance to talk about our campaign later on, we talk about those people in the boardroom, the people at the very top of a company, and how they make decisions, and who they bring into the conversation when they're making decisions. But actually, that decision-making runs throughout an entire business. Um, and I think that the, the work that Kate's doing and the framework she's describing are incredibly powerful in terms of aligning a whole load of whys throughout the ownership, throughout the governance, and throughout the other sort of incentives that play on people as they're making decisions. I'm going to have to stop you. you stop me. I'm just watching the I clock. Can, I'd wrap so it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing that, that just is the power of the brand. So I, you know, I think and that is becoming more and more prevalent for, from a B Corp point of view, the B Corp brand. But... Um, in helping consumers change. But I want to move to innovation because it was something we talked about and um, the, the role of it, I guess the role of innovation for this agenda, Marie-Claire, we were, we, were, we were thinking about that and, and I know you've got a few, a few things going on and you've got a lot of people in, who work in your company. How does, does it run through the whole company? Is it, how's it, how do you set it up? How do you think about it against this planetary boundaries agenda? Because we have only a few minutes, yep. if we speak about innovation, because it's really key uh, when we are at Change Now, for us, we try really to push innovation at every stage of the company. Because, uh, Alexandra, you mentioned uh, disruption. It's really also to have disruptive innovation that can support you to change your business model. So, for example, today we have here a uh, few startups. Uh, one, uh, I, li I like it because it's already very operational. It's about how you can use new raw materials like the mycelium. So it's yep. something made by a mushroom. And we were able to work with uh, this startup called uh, uh, Mogu with the product FAA. And uh, last October, uh, we put in our boutique a Balencia coat made uh, from mushrooms. So you can, so, uh, you can go to see it. Uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, we are also working uh, the link between digital and innovation. Uh, for the traceability of the raw material, uh, it's really key. So we try really to work on its end when we are speaking about innovation and sustainability. And our dream, for example, is how we will be able to make some laser uh, in lab. Because in your business, uh, laser is really key. You have a big environmental footprint on the environmental size through biodiversity, water, land use, and everything. So if we are able to do that, that's why we are working also with startups like uh, Vitrolabs. Amazing. And it's great you know, to see that coming to life at Change Now um, you know, with your support and your, your engagement in that, which possibly two or three years ago wouldn't have been happening. Um, Alexandra, it was you crazy, uh, you know, so, uh, a few years ago when we were speaking that uh, we will replace with mycelium. Yeah. Uh, and put it in a, yeah. Where people uh, were thinking that we are a little bit crazy in I'm not caring. asking you how much that coat cost either, but um, it's probably not, you know, it's probably reasonably expensive. Um, but very good value. Alexandra, um, uh, a little bit about L'Oreal and your, how you're innovating. 
behind the scenes and I'm um, yeah so I, I always like to have a real discussion so I, I <laughs> always try to take the, another angle on it so I think yes innovation is extremely important but disruptive innovation is not happening every three months you know disruptive innovation is called disruptive because it's really huge so if we want to manage the, if we would like to face the challenge of the environmental crisis, we would like need disruptive innovation every day if we are just relying on innovation. So innovation is extremely important, but we have to stop telling us ourselves that this is going to be the solution. It is going to be many things. It is a real transformation of models, of the way we think of everybody, huh? because we, there is not, even if all companies does what, do what Caring and L'Oreal and our B Corp corporations do, we still wouldn't have managed the problem. You know, there is much, much more work to do. So innovation is one of the solution, but we cannot go home and think, okay, there is so much innovation ongoing, we are going to manage this, you know? Yeah. Uh, that, is a, that is a legend, and I'm very afraid of this legend. It is like the, the same one that everybody has its 1.5 degree plan, you know? Companies, pick countries, you know? Every country has this uh, theoretical targets and nobody is doing it. So w in what does that is supposed to make me fail better? Because this is paper is patient, we say in Austria. You know, I'm, I'm Austrian. So with paper is patient, you can write a lot of things. So we need people who do. And doing is not just disruptive innovation. There are a lot more things necessary. And I think what um, I really liked in the first, and then I'll stop because uh, now I'm taking too much time. I'll stop here. Living wage, living Go wage. Quickly. So this is, the, this is really something that uh, was said in the beginning. Living wage is so important because for us, it seems obvious that we can sacrifice a little bit of our comfort or I hope more of our comfort for future generation. But if you tell that to Indian, African, uh, South Asian people who are entering development, how do you explain that, that they have to sacrifice their child now for the future generations. That is not going to happen because they see their child. So we have to be able to create an economic system where living wage, where people can live from what they earn. And I think it's profoundly indecent when companies uh, say that this is not possible. So we have not just made living wage an obligation for L'Oreal, but also in 2030, all our strategic suppliers have to pay living wage yep. in our supply chain because we do not want to be associated to um, economic activities where people work for us indirectly, but do not earn enough to survive. Yep. I mean, such an important point. So I'm glad I, 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 I let you carry on talking. Look, we've got We've really got not much time left, and I'm, <coughs> I need to keep the time. So, <coughs> Chris, I mean, do you give me 30 seconds on the Better Business Act quickly, because I know you wanted to just talk about how, it's, how you're thinking about that quick, very quickly, if you don't mind. Thanks, James. Yeah, I mean, 29 seconds is ambitious, <coughs> but um, I'll try. So, so uh, and, and I'll link it to this, to this innovation um, question as well. It, I don't know whether this translates this expression, Necessity is the mother of invention, um, you know, and I think that ultimately I'll go back to what I was saying earlier. The people who are making decisions in business have they have to have ultimately the crisis in that conversation every time they're making a decision. And so uh, that's what B Corps do. That's the commitment they've made when they become a B Corp. So the Better Business Act is a campaign we're running in the UK to try and change the core duties of directors. So it's section 172 of the Companies Act. You'll all look it up and read it, I'm sure. Um, but it essentially will say that as a director of business in, in the UK, what you need to do is you need to align the interests of your shareholders with wider society and the environment. And that is the minimum expectation that we have of directors in business. And what that does, it brings those stakeholders into the conversation, it brings the necessity into yep. the conversation. So you can't make a decision without considering that, that necessity. And that will, of course, drive innovation. So that's, that's good, thank you. And you know, I'm a signatory to that. Look, we've run out of time and I'm disappointed that we've run out of time because these guys are so amazing and it was such a fantastic debate. But thank you so much. And Alexandre, thank you for you know, diverting the questions a little bit to get us on topic, and, and Marie-Claire, I mean, amazing what you're doing. It's, I'm so impressed. These guys are amazing. They're here with us sharing these stories. Thank you, and thank you, Chris.